So one of the most controversial topics in the field of professional musicians is this old question of can adults really develop absolute pitch, also known as perfect pitch? And I'm here to tell you, yes, you absolutely can develop absolute pitch. You just have to understand what it actually is, and you also have to know how to properly train for it. There are some other content producers on YouTube that have made videos, some of them with thousands or millions of views, and unfortunately, they're sharing this wrong, incorrect information. They're telling you that you cannot learn absolute pitch as an adult, and that you have to be born with it or you have to develop it at a young age. And there's also people telling you that you wouldn't want to develop it anyway because it makes things worse for you as a musician. None of those statements are true. They're all completely false. And I will explain why in this video. So do I have absolute pitch? Yes. And I will explain to you the story of how it happened as I remember it. So let's rewind this all the way back to 1998, when I was just 17 years old. I was in high school, and at the time I was in a couple of music ensembles. I was also in a band outside of the school with a couple of friends where I played the guitar. Back then, I was looking for any way that I could to improve my musicianship because I had a lot of weaknesses. And just so you know, if you asked any of those people who are still alive today that were in the band, if you asked them, did I have absolute pitch when we first started, they would tell you, no, I didn't have the ability. In fact, none of us did. None of us knew what it was or how to develop it at the time. We used to sometimes play notes at the piano and have each other guess them, but of course we were always wrong because nobody in our band had absolute pitch at the time. So I wanted to keep developing my musicianship. And at the time, I was occasionally purchasing issues of the Guitar World magazine, which at the time, they were almost always running this advertisement claiming that you could learn perfect pitch. Of course, I'm referring to the David Lucas Burge Perfect Pitch Ear Training Course. So I read the advertisement and I was very skeptical but of course I had this strong desire where I wanted to have perfect pitch. So I convinced my parents to purchase the course. If for no other reason, I wanted to at least show that this was a scam and then warn my other musician friends not to do the course and not to buy it, which back then it was only available on cassette. There wasn't even a compact disc version yet. I'm not sure if all of you know what a cassette is, but I am not a fan of cassettes and I've never have been. But the course also came with a book and the book was really important as well as the tapes that you'd listen to. I listened to all the tapes and I read through the entire book and more and more I thought, this makes a lot of sense what Burge is saying. I thought, it does seem weird that people cannot recognize tone colors, but we all have the ability to see colors. So I followed to my best of my ability the instructions that Burge gave. So what that meant was I had to have a partner to make this course work. So I talked my sister into playing notes at the piano and she would play the F sharp and the E flat notes to begin with, just playing random E flats and F sharps anywhere on the keyboard. But also, during this time, Burge had made a slight modification to his course in that he suggested that people also try the notes C, D, and E. So I had my sister play all of these notes at the piano, and for the first three days, nothing happened, and I couldn't tell any improvement at all. More and more, I began to think I had been scammed by this author. But on the fourth day, everything changed for me. Suddenly, my sister was playing the E and the D and the C notes, and I had this aha moment where I could suddenly just hear how there were these subtle feelings or colors, however you want to call it. There's these unique feelings or moods that each of the pitches have. And once I heard this, I realized, oh, that's what absolute pitch is. And I thought, that's it? Yeah, that's really it. 
it's not something supernatural. It's nothing really complicated. It's a very easy natural ability that unfortunately most of us have just not learned when we were children. So once I could recognize that there were differences between C, D, and E, it was really easy for me to see how the rest of the tones had their own unique feeling. And I developed a full absolute pitch in less than one week of training. And it's permanent, you know, it's for the rest of my life I have this ability. But something very important I need to say is that while I was ear training, there were two things that are really important that I believe contributed to me being successful. The first is that when I was listening, I was listening as effortlessly as possible, meaning that I was trying to let the notes come to my ear, letting things come to me rather than trying to aggressively go out there and try to hear them. We're not used to that as musicians, especially because we use relative pitch, which is being very active, but you have to try to listen to things in a really effortless, relaxed kind of way. One suggestion I might give is that maybe do something where you're focusing on something else, such as drawing a picture or painting, do something like that and then have your partner play the notes because what this can do is it can free up your mind and let your ear listen a lot more easily. But the other really important thing that I did is that every time I made a mistake, we would correct it. Meaning that if I guessed it was an E, but it actually was a D, we would play the E and then the D very slowly. This might sound like a chore and it might sound unnecessary and boring, but this is where I believe the real ear training happens. It's really important to correct your mistakes. You might not feel like you're making progress, but you are. This correcting your mistakes thing also applies to relative pitch, but most people don't know that it actually is really important when you're trying to train for absolute pitch. So let me get to the frequently asked questions that people ask me all the time about this. Is absolute pitch something to do with memorizing the pitch? No, it has nothing to do with memorizing or how high or how low a pitch is. It only has to do with recognizing what is there. You see, it doesn't matter if you play a C in any octave, it's still going to have that same C flavor. It has nothing to do with how high or low the note is. And if you try to train your ear to get absolute pitch by memorizing a pitch, you're just going to frustrate your ear and make yourself tired. Next question. Does everyone who has absolute pitch, do they hear the notes the same? Well, I can't answer this in an absolute way because I am only one person. However, there does seem to be a lot of evidence that yes, this is the case because, I'll give you an example. If you take the note F sharp, most people do report that it has a nasally kind of sound to it. And I agree, it does have a nasally sound. A lot of people report that E flat does have kind of a softer, mellower sound. Yes, so in other words, I believe there's a lot of evidence that this is the case, but I can't prove it because I'm just one person. Were there any pitches that were more difficult to learn than others? Interestingly, there was only one. For some reason, I had a little bit more difficulty learning the note F natural. I don't know why that is, but it was the case. I can hear it now and it's not an issue, but this might be something you experience when you're trying to learn absolute pitch. Are there any notes that I like more than others or notes that I dislike? Well, really I've learned to appreciate all the 12 tones for their own unique characteristics that they have. But I would say that C, the note C, does have a kind of clean or almost boring sound to it. If the note C were a color, I believe it would be the color white. So I find it a kind of dull key to write in. And that's the reason why when I write music, most of the time I try to avoid writing in C major. But of course, can I always avoid that key? No. Sometimes it's better to write in that key for the musicians. What are some of the ways that absolute pitch has helped you as a musician, practically speaking? 
Well, I have to answer this in multiple segments because there's several ways. The first is that I could usually tell what key a song was in just by listening to it on the radio or just hearing it somewhere. I didn't have to use a reference like a piano. This may not be related to being a professional musician, but I did notice in the environment around us, a lot of things do have a pitch, meaning that I started to notice that sometimes cars would honk their horn, and I noticed that might be an F sharp, or there's some other sound from construction down the road that has some kind of pitch. You begin to become more aware of the world of sound that surrounds us all, and you begin to appreciate how everything, well, not everything, but you begin to appreciate how a lot of these sounds are pitches that you can recognize. Another small way that this helped me was that when I was in college music theory class, we had something called dictation. The teacher would play something on the piano and we had to transcribe it to the best of our ability just using our ears. Having absolute pitch, of course, is going to make this a lot easier. So I had no problems with dictation. Another benefit was that when I was in college, I would sometimes sing in various choir ensembles. Sometimes we were in very small choirs and we did not have a piano because we might have been singing a cappella somewhere in public. If somebody forgot to bring their pitch pipe, I was just used as a human pitch pipe and it worked fine. That's one of the little benefits you get when you have absolute pitch. But by far the biggest benefit that I can think of is that it gave me a much deeper appreciation for how not all the keys sound the same. Not every tonal center has the same feeling or the same quality. And I'll give you an example of this. There's a very famous march written by Ray Fawn Williams titled Sea Songs. He wrote this piece originally for concert band and someone later arranged it for orchestra. but the orchestra version is in a completely different key than the original. So when I heard the orchestra version, I just thought, mm, this doesn't sound as good as the original. There was something about the original key which those notes fit better. But of course, as a composer, I recognize that we cannot always write for the keys that we want to write for. We have to write for the keys that are best for the performing musicians. If you composed a piece of music in the key of E major, you would probably want to transpose it to either F major or E flat major for a band. That's just the compromise that we have to make sometimes. Another incorrect assumption that people make is they believe that once you have absolute pitch, you turn into a cyborg or a computer. No, you're still going to be human and this means that yes, even if you have absolute pitch, you can still make occasional mistakes. Everyone that I've known who has absolute pitch, when we were testing each other, everyone makes a mistake sometimes. Your brain does not become a computer. Now here's an important question. People ask, has having absolute pitch made your life more difficult as a professional musician? No. I will give you some ways that it has made it a little bit more tricky, but Overall, it has made my life so much better as a musician and a composer. The first thing I can tell you is that when I was in choir class in college, sometimes our conductor would hand us a piece of music and he would tell us to transpose it up a half step. This sometimes was a little tricky for me because I would be reading the notes on the page, so in my mind I'm hearing some of the correct notes, but in reality I'm hearing something that's off by a half step. So it was kind of confusing for me. How I got around this though was that I tried to memorize my part the best that I could so I didn't have to be dependent on the notes on the page. The other thing I will say is that once you develop absolute pitch, it is true that there's no going back to the way you heard things exactly before, but this should not scare you. It's probably not gonna have any sort of negative effect on you. 
everyone that I've known that has absolute pitch and was being honest about it, they would say it helped them far more than any small inconveniences that it gave them. Another false assumption that people make is they think, oh, if you have absolute pitch, it's going to be super easy to develop relative pitch. Unfortunately, this is not true. Some people do, but really everyone has their own unique experience of how they develop ear training. I can say that for me, developing a good relative pitch, meaning that developing relative pitch in a way that I could use it in real time, it took many, many years of constant training. And the truth is, I'm still improving now. You never really stop developing your relative pitch. It could always be better. But unfortunately, this idea that relative pitch is going to become easy is incorrect. Well, or I should say, it's not guaranteed. Which leads me to the next question. Is having relative pitch or absolute pitch more important? Well, I would definitely say having absolute pitch will give you certain abilities that you cannot get if you have relative pitch. I would say that the majority of professional musicians, a good relative pitch is going to take you further in life. Those of us who work in music, we work with horizontal music. So, of course, if you can have a good relative pitch, it's going to take you further, I think. But, ideally, you want to have both. But if you just had to choose one or the other, I would say relative pitch is going to be more important. Which leads me to another question or comment people often make. Sometimes people without absolute pitch, they will say, oh, I wouldn't want it because it's going to bother me when I hear choirs that sing out of tune. This is completely false. It doesn't bother you anymore whether you have or do not have absolute pitch. In fact, you really don't experience music that differently. It still sounds the same. The only difference is that you recognize more of what you're hearing by hearing the pitch feelings or pitch colors. In fact, you do not have to have absolute pitch to be able to tell if a choir is flat. Most people can probably tell when a choir is flat because there's something just off about the sound. It's something a little bit unpleasant, even if they can't put their finger on it. So, no, this idea that you're going to be bothered more by things because you have absolute pitch, totally false. It's not true. And if someone tells you they have absolute pitch and they tell you that things bother them more because they have it, they're just saying this because they want to show off their ability and they want to get a little bit of attention. Don't worry about this. Don't be concerned. This is something that people repeat a lot, but again, it's not true. Does having absolute pitch make it harder for you to determine if a note is high or low? No. Just because you have the ability of absolute pitch, it doesn't mean it completely wipes away your relative pitch. You actually have both of these abilities to some degree, or I should say you at least have relative pitch to some degree. But no, this is another incorrect, totally false thing that people sometimes say. So. Why isn't absolute pitch being taught more at universities and conservatories? Well, there's a couple reasons for this. The first is that most of the college professors have not developed absolute pitch on their own. So if you haven't learned how to do something, how can you teach it to someone else? That's the biggest problem. But the other problem is that a lot of these music faculty are still spreading this incorrect information that absolute pitch is something you have to be born with or that you cannot learn it as an adult or they believe it's a supernatural ability. It can be a little difficult to learn or tricky, but all those other things are completely false. And unfortunately, that information still gets passed around and spread all over the world, including YouTube because people simply do not understand what absolute pitch is. Which leads me to the next question. Why is it that most adults do not develop absolute pitch? Well, one reason is because they falsely believe it's something they can't develop, but I think the main reason is they just do not know how to do the right ear training exercises which will produce the results. Which leads me to the next question. Why do children tend to develop the ability more than adults? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Children, especially when they're young, you know, 
three, four, five, six, seven years old, they're in a state where they're absorbing things very easily. That's why it's easier to learn multiple languages when children are very young. But the other reason is that they're effortlessly doing a lot of things. They're not trying so hard. They're not using so much of their intellect. They're just sort of being and letting things come to them. That's the reason why most people develop absolute pitch when they are a child, because it just sort of comes to them and they stumble upon it by accident. Another good question people ask is they ask, were there any other people that you knew who developed absolute pitch as an adult? Yes, there were a few. I had a professor when I first entered college when I was 18, and he heard that I developed absolute pitch through some sort of book or ear training. So he asked if he could borrow the course from me, and I said, sure, go ahead. And interestingly, I didn't hear anything back from him in regards to this ear training method for three or four months. But one day I came into choir class and he asked me, just, just play a few notes on the piano. I played one chord on the piano and immediately he named off all the tones, starting from the bottom to the top. And I looked at him and I said, wow, you've got absolute pitch now. And he sort of smiled and said, well, yeah, I've sort of developed some of the ability, but I'm still, you know, I'm still getting better at it. He had to invest three or four months to get absolute pitch. And to be totally clear, he had a really good relative pitch and he was a really good pianist. He had a lot of talents and skills that I did not have at that age, but it still took him three or four months to develop absolute pitch. But it just shows you it is possible you can do it it's just no one knows for sure how long it will take i also had a friend who i knew in college who played in the orchestra he was a string player and he had many many years of playing in the orchestra he already had a really good ear and when i was testing him on the piano the first day i was doing burge's ear training with him he started to pick up the differences in the notes right then on the first day so that's an example of someone having a really ripe ear for absolute pitch. There were some other people I knew who I loaned the course to, and it did not work out for them. They did not develop it. Perhaps it might have taken more time for them to do it, but after a year of doing it, if it still hasn't worked, I can't really blame people if they want to throw in the towel at that point. Which leads me to the next question. How do you know if you have enough natural talent to learn absolute pitch? Well, this is kind of difficult to answer, but I'll give you a theory that I have. I would say, can you tell that there's a difference between a major third and a minor third? If I play a major third on the piano, whether it be melodic or harmonic, and I play a minor third, can you hear some difference in the feeling of the two intervals? I think everyone watching this is saying, of course, who could not hear a difference? It's really obvious. Well, similarly, each of the unique 12 tones, they have their own unique feeling. It's just that it's not as obvious as relative pitch. Relative pitch is really obvious. It's on the surface. Whereas absolute pitch, it's a little more subtle. You have to keep listening until you have that little breakthrough in your ear, and then you'll go, ah, now I hear it. And then you'll realize it's really not a big deal at the same time. Here's another question that people ask, and it's an important one. Is having absolute pitch going to make you an Igor Stravinsky or a Beethoven? No, it will not. Although having absolute pitch will definitely make composing easier for you to some degree, and it will increase your appreciation of each of the keys. You still have to put in the work to learn counterpoint, harmony, form, instrumentation, orchestration, keys. You, have to, you still have to put in time to learn all those things that make a good composer. So, no. But again, it will help you to have absolute pitch as a composer. Which leads me to the next question. Will everyone develop absolute pitch that tries? Probably not. That would be like saying, can everyone see colors? 
I think some people are naturally more ready to learn absolute pitch than others. It's just the way the universe is. Some people are more talented at sports. Some people are really good at math. There's definitely talents that people have. However, I do think the majority of musicians could learn absolute pitch if you just know how to practice it properly. And also, I should mention that I have no affiliation with David Lucas Burge. I'm not getting paid to make this video. This is just me simply sharing my honest experience as I remember it, hoping to inspire other people to also try to learn absolute pitch. The main point of this video is that I want musicians, regardless of their age, to not feel discouraged by the false information that's out there on YouTube and also in our universities and conservatories. These people telling you that you cannot develop absolute pitch as an adult, they have not developed it themselves. How can you have a good understanding of what you're talking about if you've not learned it for yourself? I'm here to tell you, yes, it's absolutely possible that you can learn absolute pitch, but how long it's going to take is going to vary from person to person. Some people it may take less than a week. Some people it might take three months. Some people it might take six months. Some people it might take a year. And if it takes a really long time, I can't fault people for wanting to give up because, you know, after some point you have to decide is it worth the investment of time. And another reason is I want you to do your own research, go down your own journey, do your own ear training, and then decide for yourself if you agree with me or disagree. But don't just take someone's word for it that you cannot learn absolute pitch, because you absolutely can, and I am living proof of that. I am composer Britt Andrew Burns, and I wish you the best of luck if you do decide to pursue absolute pitch for yourself.